Good morning. Today we will share some layer production management and I hope you can pick it up for your operations. The outline is we discuss the Philippine industry, some rations, building, growing, and then laying. The laying, we will discuss the lighting program, how to attain peak, post peak, and culling. The Philippines is beset by cases of bird flu as of now, and we are short with the incoming breeder layer blocks. As you can see in the screen, some of this is in the 2020 deliveries, but right now we still are short with our target breeder layer import. So we expect the industry, the layer industry, to be short in production in the next one and a half years. In 2021, our population is around 43.5 million, considering an average of 82.5% production that suggests a 1,196,000 trays of eggs per day. Still, this is short with the per capita consumption target for Filipinos. So the industry, the layer egg industry looks hopeful and looks viable for us. So we need to practice better production management. I'm just showing you some slides of breeder layers I have handled before. This is high sex. This is Bobans. And this is Shaver. These are breeder farms located here in Luzon, which I was favorably used as consultants. There are different strains of layers present in the Philippines. Sadly, people call it breed, but technically, they are merely strains. They are not pure breed, just like in swine. They are just strains. So from Hendrix, we had Babka, Bobans, Decal, Shaber, and Lisa White. And from Loman, we have H&N, Highline, and Loman Classic. All these strains have their distinct production capabilities and hopefully I can tackle a generalized program for you to address all these strains. We don't have any grandparent farm in the Philippines, so we just import this parent stock hatching eggs. And then from the parent stock, they are raised the same way we raise our layers. We need to develop their appetite, immune functions, and provide optimum environment. As shown earlier in the picture, most breeder layer operations are still using conventional housing, avoiding the CCS type to produce breeders adaptable to the Philippines. Uh, this is one of my consultancy. It's a breeder layer farm in Rizal. We box our DOPs and those you can see in the background, the uh, crates, yellow crates are the male, male hatches or cockerels which we use as feeds for our crocodiles. So we will begin by putting in mind that all chicks have their natural innate immunity response to combat diseases. There are feathers to avoid the entrance of bacteria and other diseases. Birds do cry to remove irritants from their eyes, especially for powder beads. Birds do have their 
sipon to remove any foreign body entering the respiratory tract. And then they have they have their natural probiotics inside, which provides enzymes, vitamins, by themselves. So with this natural immunity by the birds, we can provide a program realizing the different factors affecting our growing to laying of layers. So the health, the diseases, now the feed supply, lighting program, the appropriate vaccine program, water, a very critical ingredient to our successful layer operation, and of course, temperature, ventilation, and our manpower. Basically, problems in the farm arises from men. The owners themselves not by following the biosecurity protocols set. The, the personnel, the black men, not taking a bath, not changing clothes, changing their footwear. All this adds to the possibility of creating havoc in our operation. So this we need to put in the back of our minds to practice religiously the set programs for our biosecurity. Part of our service to our ready-to-lay bullet and BOP clients is to provide an ELISA or blood picture of our DOCs for their vets to provide and do a good vaccination program based on the status of the birds, of the DOCs, the DOPs. So now we discuss the operation from DOP. They all pull it, they call it. We need to give them proper brooding, proper feeding, the beaking. Uh, fortunately, some of our breeder sources have their laser beakers already. That's why you will receive the old bullets that are already laser beak, and it will the beak will fall off in 10 to 12 days. For some, you still have to do manual beaking in the farm. But this is becoming an issue, animal welfare issue. So far, we really need to depict our birds. Our objective is to produce uniform, beautiful birds with the proper scheduling of medicine and vaccine. So we start with the disinfection. I really want to show you, I am also participating in the insurance that the layer cages are clean, even the grow out cages. And I want to make sure that the dilution of the disinfectants to be used will be properly promulgated. So biosecurity, it is an open, most quoted word now because of ASF and bird flu. So it refers to the Actions taken in the farm to prevent the entry and spread of the diseases, whether parasites, fungi, bacteria, or virus. Now, the next topic is the ration. Various strains have their own nutritional requirements to attain their body weight targets of around 1.1 at 16 weeks or 1.2. I won't discuss this thoroughly, you need to have a good nutritionist or if you are using commercial feeds, I would suggest you get the profile of the feeds to ensure that what your birds, what strain of birds you're using will get their proper nutrition. This one I'm showing you is quite low with the ME and energy. For now, I am using around 3,000 kilocalories of energy for the first four weeks. 
The rest is still okay, as you can see in the chart. The consequences of this global warming results to raw materials of poor quality. Even our corn here in the Philippines are showing uh, mag magos and sometimes molds. So even the most reputable feed company encounter problems because of their difficulties in storing their raw materials. Sometimes scrupulous suppliers will provide good raw mass, but then again later on we insert some bad uh, raw materials, especially in corn. And then transporting feeds here in the Philippines is quite funny to see. Shown in the picture, they are still using the feeds as their stepping board. Um, the Philippines, usually feeds come without cover, only tarpaulin cover, so definitely it gets wet during, especially now, it's hot, then it will rain in the afternoon. So our pigs coming into the farm may be the best formulation made, but still, it's not the best pigs the birds will take. And this is another unfortunate thing, or it's good because God gave us all these insects too and animals. So we need to level up their population or I mean maintain their population. But then in the farm, in the feed bodega, program should be made to control cockroaches, rats and mice, flies, and these weevils, as these are intermediate hosts of various parasites and viral diseases. Now when we have our DOC coming to us, I am showing you the proper way of holding the birds to check. With this position, you they can check if the navel is unhealed, the eyes are clear, the legs are okay, the wings are okay. This is the best way to examine your chicks because there are so many rejections not necessarily being done in the farm. With the short supply of DOPs, clients are forced to take on the DOPs they receive for the day without checking it anymore. And then they will have a high mortality of 2% to 3% in the first week. I'm showing you a chart. Uh, this may be small, maybe for you to see. Later on, I am available for your questions. So please do so. Now, the first four weeks of the DOC, our intention is to take care of the bone formation, digestive tract, improvement of the birds, and the buto, balahibo, bitupa. That's the thing that is developing in the first five weeks of the birds. Bitupa, this gastrointestinal tract, you need to provide the best feed is scramble, scramble form, as it can be digested by the chicks. The chicks have this yellow yolk uh, as their own source of food for the first five days, six days. So they may not have that ability to eat well. You can see the daily. They are given only 10 grams per day. But the best thing is to stimulate eating for them. So we need to put feeds regularly at small amounts for the birds to be interested and later on developing their intestine so that in the long run, they will get the nutrients they have in the body. Provisions for antibiotics. Later, I will discuss. 
So healthy DOPs will produce up to 96, 97. My record is 98% for six weeks and 90, up to 90% for 60, 65 weeks. These are good production records for the birds. And later on, I will see, show some slides of different strings. So the first week, the birds have no capability to produce their own heat. So we provide artificial heat. The slide shows the brooding floor spaces required. Actually, these are supposedly have been measured during the construction of the buildings. But actual good observations will dictate that maybe the floor space was correct, but the birds are bigger, so the people inside the farm should monitor closely how the birds look like. In this picture, if one will tell you, they have enough water uh, drinking fountains, but the birds are drinking more in one, one nipple other than the, on the, on the right side, this one, more chicks are drinking than this side. So behaviorally, the plaquemines should move about and allow them to scatter more to have all chances of drinking. So I have placed them for floor space, 0 0.6 square foot per bird. So for drinkers, 10 birds per nipple. This will allow us to monitor if the birds are able to eat and drink in the first 24 hours. This is very vital for handling our birds. Owners, upon counting the, the birds that arrive because they will pay for it, then when go out of the farm, not checking how the birds are partaking the feeds there giving as the plaquemine will put more pits and then sleep also. The first eight hours you must check if it's, the crop is full but soft and pliable. So this means they will eat and drink at the same time. Just like humans, some chicks will sleep upon arriving in the farm. Some will drink, some will eat and drink, some will make marites around pa and move around the brooding area. So these behaviors must be contained by the, the end of eight hours, putting feeds and all the birds will go to the feeders and waterers. That's a good sign. Sample weighing is necessary for you to establish a baseline for your target for the coming layer production, but inaccurate lightweight checking as shown in the picture will not give you a good data for providing a program. It does not measure individually the words. So this is some type of brooding. They use light, the other ones use a CCS operation. Most open than that, we don't use rice house anymore for layer DOCs. We use check paper. This is another CCS operation, climate control system. But you can see the birds are not dispersed quite around the farm, the brooding area, so trampling can occur. Some have wood, still have wood shavings. Critical for owners is to insist on putting all the chicks. But once you reject the chicks upon arrival, throw it out. Uh, I mean, dispose of it. Don't let it stay in the farm. It will be carriers of this. Some have this case brooding. This is a very nice procedure. So every week we can move the birds from 25, it will become 15, become later on eight birds per cage. Easier to vaccinate 
but difficult to control the feed distribution. But I produce the best ready to lay birds in this operation. Some have this operation during summer, they readily, within three days, they are ready to open up the brooding area. Birds are moving about already, we don't have any head first anymore. But all the litters on the side, you can see, this will provide an avenue for bacterial growth. As in this area, we use chick paper, but it is not cleaned or replaced daily. So the manure there will be will be posing a problem with the chicks. The beaking a welfare issue, we usually do it at 10 to 12 days for those DOCs coming from not laser the beak, the office. So why the beak? One, we want to maintain birds that will eat minimally, I mean, optimally for their body weight growth. Unlike broilers, we don't want to get them to go big. We want them to be sexy to produce more eggs. Number two, uh, layer birds are prone to continuous molting, so they tend to pick on other birds when they see blood when the feathers are falling down. So we debate. This is the best picture to show you how we can debate. The upper beak should be lower than the lower beak. Shorter, I mean. Now, in one to 16 weeks, we use booster or starter, depending on the name, then we starter or grower. Developer, all these have different formulations as suggested by their strain breeder layer operations. This you need to know. I have the, here a tunnel operation, as you can see. We still open the tunnel uh, sites as the layer birds are overcrowded. We cannot control the proper temperature during brownouts. So we opted to have open-sided buildings. For the first five weeks, you just need to provide probiotics to improve the gut system, ADEC for bone formation, and B-complex to improve appetite. Of course, you need to give them electrolytes upon arrival. For me, antibiotic flushing is no longer needed as long as you have a good supplier of the office. Uh, I'm showing you some malpractices in the field. You can see the heater using charcoal is placed on top of the feeder, so the feeds will be cooked again. And then we have various diseases, but all this will be taken care of the programming we will discuss later. So the first five weeks is bones, digestive system, and feathering. From yellow, they become white. And then we have, as shown in the table, a shaver target. Five weeks, we need to attain around 200. 330 gram body weight at nine weeks, almost 700 grams. So sample weighing should be individual. I'm stressing this again and again because I have seen these poor practices in the farm. With the 10 to six to 10 weeks from the bones you develop, now muscles will form and the maturation of some of the organs of the bird, the liver. So the supplement you need is just amino acids and some vitamins. You don't need to put so much supplements because the feed should take care of them. As I said, 
The second five weeks will mean the development of the muscles and the supplements you just need are the amino acids because these are the foundation for muscle development. Sometimes the shift impedes from grower to developer. You need to put some acidifier in the supplement. But if you have a daily dosage of probiotics, that will take care of it. Some have this cage type of growing after the brooding. This is a good way of handling them so that vaccination individually will be ensured because you don't have much problem in putting them together. No more trampling during vaccination. So vaccination is intended to improve all this adaptive immune system of the birds, the spleen, the sickle tonsils, the bursa, and the bone marrow, thymus. So for programming of vaccination, this is my own chart of the diseases that occurs from day one to week 16 here in the Philippines. So the blank spaces are the opportunity time for you to do vaccinations. Because example for NCD, it strikes the bird at around third, the third week. So we need to vaccinate, it, vaccinate them at the first and second week to provide protection before they are susceptible to that disease. This will be a good chart to follow for checking on the vaccination program of the farm and considering what's occurring in the farm. I am handling one farm that is susceptible to oxygenosis as early as two weeks, so we hope for day one vaccination of oxygenosis. The route of administration is important from drinking water to injection. This is because of the way the diseases affects the bird. Highly technical, but it, it only gives you a bird's eye view that once they inject it, it's needed because they need a stronger vaccine response. Once they allow to drink it, it's antibody mediated or the birds produce antibodies readily, so it's either by water or by intranasal or intraocular drop. Procedures done in the farm. The objective is good to vaccinate, but then again, procedures are bad because the birds you can see in the other side. After vaccination, they don't get the clean water and good feeds. And even the manpower are so exposed. Remember these vaccines, some are live and may cause problems to humans too. Another problem with growing at this stage is supposedly you will utilize all the space in the, in the building, but the plugman failed to initiate putting feeds and water on the open space. Ito, ano ito? You need to understand this. When you expand the area, you don't put the feeds back to where they are used to. Don't put feeds there. Put feeds first on the open spaces, the new spaces, so that birds will go there. They will look for pins. So once they were eating there, then you can put pins back to the original site. So we will spread the birds and ensure good uniformity. People coming outside as vaccination crew provides a respite for the overnight works done by the plaquemine. But then they are a possible source of infection because they move from farm to farm location to location that they may be carrying diseases already. I don't want to preempt anybody, but this is a good procedure as long as the people coming to the farm are isolated prior to going to the next farm. I'll just show you some pictures. The objective is good. The birds are laser-debate as 
recommended by the supplier, please provide more water so the birds can drink. But you can see the objective is good, but you praise too much galloners like this, it doesn't work. You want to have better eating procedure for the birds? You put so much feeders. Your objective is good. No overcrowding during eating, but vacant spaces provides avenue for feeds to be, what do you call this? Mapanis ba? Hindi na kailangan, wala na kakain eh. So, sometimes, these simple things that they think was correct, when you look at them, it's already wrong. You want to tame by the way, targets. The waterer here in the next picture shows birds putting, climbing up so they can put, they can give manure there so the water line will be there. So the 16th week, 11 to 16th week, this is the most critical development of the reproductive tract. Same as humans, 13, 14, 15, 16, teenager days, teenager weeks for the bird. So what you need to supply with in this area is ADEC. A for the follicle development, D for the sexual hormonal development, and E also for sexual hormonal development. So that's the best therapy. Good growth, but the space is too uh, short for the bird. So overcrowding will later on lead to death and spread of disease. Oh. Now, on the last stage of the bird, the 16 weeks, we need to palpate, check on the birds, how they look, how they feel. Are the clavicles open? Are they ready to lay? Have they attained their target, by the way? So for CCS or controlled climate grown RTL, they should be moved to open laying house earlier, around 15 weeks, because they need to adjust to conventional temperatures and not controlled temperatures. This still happen. CCS grown, conventional housing, laying housing, transferred, poor performance. So then at 16 weeks to 18 weeks, this is the period of maturation. You will see the follicles growing. For me, I need to place my birds at around 1.180 to 1.2, by the way, no matter what strain they have. I always, especially for birds grown during the cooler months of the year, will surely peak during summer. This gives an opportunity to put them on a slightly overweight status. When you can see the picture, almost all birds are of the same size. But looking closer, you can see that the, the middle bird is the right weight. The lower bird is the smaller bird. Now for transfer to the house, uh, wrong planning results to rush cleaning of houses. And then disinfection over usage of disinfection will provide resistance later on. These are my practices that occurs in the farm that needs to be checked time and then again. Water lines. So I want to show you a very nice picture. It's very clean. Nobody can tell me that this building is used for almost six cycles already. It's very clean. So this is the look of a good art ready to lay for transfer. Good birds and then the practice of men transferring the birds. Uh, not only destroys the cages, but also very inappropriate. You can see one bird escaping down here. This management. 
Not good body weight conformity. You can see after transferring, other birds fall outside. They can escape the cages. This will be a good source of disease again. And then the feeders are not clean prior to transfer. Some I make it a point that when I discuss layer operations, I want the owner and everybody in the farm to consider it a business proposition. We are business partners, so I have some disabilities shown during seminars inside the farm. When we buy from outside sources, I myself go check how the birds look. Sometimes we don't have enough growing area to attain our target population, so we have to resort to buying ready to lay from other farms. And once we deliver, everybody happy. See how clean? The bird should have pink deposition of fat in the abdominal cavity, ensuring a possible development of the follicles. And you can see the head of the femur, so calcified already. We won't experience lameness. The breast area is of good conformation. There is the look of a follicle at 16 weeks. They are starting already to form. And then when the transfer, see how clean the farm. Although the farm is old, I'm happy to report this is very nice farm. Probiotics are used continuously from growing to laying. These are some of the good aspects from probiotics. They can improve egg quality. They produce a good immune response. They stimulate growth prevent the occurrence of antibiotic resistance. I won't discuss this anymore because this is a long discussion for the dis formation of the egg. I just want you to know that the timing of application of amino acids, then ADEC, and then liver tonic is essential to attain the proper flow of egg formation, egg deposition, and then egg laying. Again, I will repeat, amino acid, ADEC, liver tonic, of course, the probiotics always there. My estimate, my guide is around six centavos per egg expense for laying flocks. Continuous checking of the flocks during laying. Some will have tapeworm, so we need to apply Prosequantel and Libamisol, generic. Some people don't understand that the egg follicles should be around eight to nine during peaking flock. At this yellow color, they say it should be only seven because they lay every week. You should have a, when you count the one on the left, one is already big. So two, three, four, five, six, six only. So the bird at 33 weeks have only six eggs. So this shows a proper production record for this one. This one have pale eggs, only five. For the same poor production at 33 weeks. One of the biggest concern now for the Batangas, especially the Batangas growers, that is the disposal of manure. Because of the threat of bird flu, we have restricted movements of RTL and manure and cows in Batangas. So we have to find ways to utilize this manure. Water lines should always be cleaned thoroughly because of the, our eggs is around 92% water. So Laying birds should be around 1.2. They will lay for 71 weeks or 90 weeks normally, but sometimes it's 100 weeks. So 71 weeks laying means 497 days. My target is 410 eggs per bird for the 90 weeks. This is attainable. I am attaining higher figures than this one. As long as your mortality is less than 10%. For laying, we need to adjust lighting 
stimulation i am showing you some of my example of additional hours for lighting i don't use the 30 minutes 30 minutes addition i use one hour immediately as long as i have two hours increase by five percent production this is one of my secret others only up to add one hour after five percent me i have two hours already added as long as i attend the body weight during transfer at 16 weeks so part of my monitoring is to attain a six percent depletion from 19 weeks to 90 weeks so it means a 0 0.01 mortality per day so a small farm attaining the target 96 percent here is a figure of various strains of birds attaining peak at 30 to 35 weeks of age and starting to decline but currently all birds are performing at six ninety percent at least 90 percent up to 65 weeks in this chart 65 weeks it's already 80 81 82 but we are attaining better production aerial spraying is a must with the uh, surfactant disinfectants to prevent entry of diseases this is around 10 o'clock in the morning, the birds are, have eaten already. See how clean the bird, the farm is. At 65 weeks, uh, we have to select some for culling. Culling and birds are those with small sipit sipitan and pale comb, smaller comb and yellow beak and good feathering these are some signs that you can call of course i i instill in my blackman to put some markings on the cages where they get lesser eggs this allow me to readily check which are non-productive and i prove separate them already in some cases overflowing water it's better to have more water than letting it dry so other farms resort to makeshift repairs of the walkways so this endangered the personnel in the farm so this is a sample of one of my consultancies a 10 building eleven thousand capacity per building we are attaining 422 eggs in 497 days we attain a peak of 97%. We are never too young to, or too old to learn. So I hope I have shared some of my knowledge to you. I will flash my telephone number later on. So thank you very much. If you have any questions, please do so. Thank you.